Hi you all. I hope you've had an okay time with the web buttons and the retouching assignment. We're going to be doing them um, up here and see what I'm highlighting. It's the image manipulation. And I'm leaving in the previous professor who was Sean Sarcona. I'm leaving his in his assignment ad, which he did a gaming console. I'm going to change it up and I'm going to do a really, um, I don't mean this to sound, uh, I'm going to do a really fun billboard, which I think you guys are going to have a really good time with. I want to say two things before we begin, okay? I'm going to put this on my other screen in a minute, but um, and I'll say those two things in a second. This is the first day handout, which shows that it's worth eight points. Don't be so concerned with your points. Just show me effort and you'll be fine. And I know it says week three, okay? I'm asking a lot. Did you hear me? I'm asking a lot. Just turn in what you have by the following week, okay? and we'll figure it out over time. I'll let you do it over again, I'll let you add to it, but remember this could be a portfolio piece. Honestly, you will be that okay with it if you go one step at a time. But I'm gonna um, close the first day handout for 1320 and I'm gonna show you what I did. This is my ad that I did. It was a fun ad that put a Jeep on the top of a mountain and I'm going to show you that I, it's a very simple thing and I have sizes of ads that you can work with and I also have the text that I did minimal text and minimal logo but I want to show you all the asset files that I use so I'm going to place this on my other screen and I'm going to show you that I started with and I'll make these smaller but I started with this Jeep here right there in front of you and it was a blue Jeep which I turned into a um, into an into an any color Jeep, in this case a red Jeep, and, and we're going to have some fun doing that. And you're going to get pretty good at the pen or bezier tool as you go through this. But this was the background that I used, and it had a guy in it, and I want to show you an incredible easy trick to get rid of the guy. Now, I'm going to show you what you would begin with, but first I'm going to start with this folder. This folder is what your zip um, this is what's going to be in the canvas interface. You're going to be given um, background shots. I'll zoom in here if I can. Um, let me go command plus plus plus. Okay, that's not working. That's okay. Um, you're going to be given a folder with background shots. Inside the background shots, I'm going to click and hold the space bar down and tap it and I'm going to show you you have all of these background shots that I found and you can find your own if you want you just have to make sure that they're of pretty good resolution okay um, my background shot is not in there I can't believe it's not in there I'm going to go back and put it in there so let me close this and let me put my background 10 JPEG oh I took it out I didn't know how silly of me so I'm gonna hold the option key I'm glad I did this and I'm putting it back in there so basically I'll just show you again that the background is my background that I used as the final one which is a kind of a pale looking background now um, I chose more of a wide format for all of these because we're gonna crop them into a billboard size I'll show you how to do everything so watch and rewatch the movie okay now that's the background shots so let me open up the Jeep still shots so in the Jeep still shots you can use any of these Jeeps now where did I get some of these Jeeps where did I get some of these really cool things in a website and let me see if I still have it open which I might I went to a website and if you would write this down for me it's called seriouswheels.com s-e-r-i-o-u-s no space w-h-e-e-l-s dot com and on top I clicked J for Jeeps and then I went down to the bottom and you can see down here that I actually found the Jeep I wanted to use a um, uh, a polar edition Jeep now you can't see this it's really small but you're given different sizes from 1024 by 768 and this bottom one that I'm clicking on is 2560 by 1600 so I'll click on it and you can see you get a really nice resolution here where you can zoom in all you do if you want to choose a different Jeep than I have in the folder and I want this to be a Jeep ad so your you please make sure it's some kind of Jeep okay so I'm gonna right hand click and save the image as and you would save it as to wherever you wanted to if you wanted a different one but I'm gonna close this website again that's seriouswheels.com I'm gonna um, close the website and I'm gonna close this Jeep 
and I'm going to say those are your Jeeps. So again, I'll show you very quickly. You have all of these Jeeps that you can choose, okay? And there's basically you should be able to find something that you want to do. All right? Now I'll close it. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to show you various ads that I found. And these are ads that are either already in magazines or that have already been printed. Some have text on them, some don't. Some are pretty bad like this one or some have some really cool stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you several techniques that I used to create my ad and you can follow along and do anything you want. Okay, then actually one of the ads was this long billboard. So I'll close that. So let me close the ads and billboards. Now the logos I have, I went and found PNG files. Now why are PNG files important? Because they retain transparency. So if I were to open up this PNG in Photoshop, which I will, I'll right hand click and I'll open it in Photoshop, you will see that it opens up with a transparent background. So you didn't have to do anything to have it separate on the background and have an image behind it come through completely, which you will see later. Okay, now what I want to do is show you where you're going to begin. So I'm going to um, uh, minimize Photoshop for now. Let me go um, close this one here and then I'm going to open up first this billboard PNG file that I made. Um, this shows average PNG sizes. Let me hit command plus on this so we can see and I'll just go down like this. I chose um, up on top 12 by 24 as my standard size. Okay, And that is a pretty structural standard size. A lot of them like the one that I showed you is 14 by 48 and it says that this is the most common freeway billboard structure used today. But my ad is 12 by 24 so I'll show you when that comes into play. Okay so let me close that and let's get started right away because I got a lot to show you. Now I ended up holding the Alt or Option key and I dragged all of the stuff out of the asset folder and I put everything, the background JPEG, the Jeep that I was going to start with and I put them into my own folder and then I saved everything of my own stuff like my PSD file, I saved it into that folder. This is what you would do. You would right hand click on the background and you would open it in Photoshop just like I've opened right here. Now what I want to do is to show you a very cool thing. I'm going to hit the F key so I can expand this to full screen and let's get started. Okay. Um, eventually I'll show you how you'll crop this but I'll do it right now and there's two ways that I can do this. Okay. I can go to the marquee tool and up in the marquee tool you see this little thing up here you can go to fixed ratio or fixed size. I went to fixed ratio and it says 24 by 12. So with the rectangular marquee I just dragged a box like this okay and I have dragged it from side to side to see how much would fit in. Now let me you can barely see that on the screen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, deselect I'm gonna double click on this background layer to make it a layer I'm going to add another layer to it and I'm going to fill it with black. So the background color is black if you look what I'm pointing at right over here. And I'm going to go um, control or command delete to fill it with black. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this guy. So you can at least see when I drag this marquee thing, um, this rectangle, you can see it. So again, here I'm going to give it about a quarter inch bleed if you see what I'm doing and I'm just going to drag it. Now because I have it at a fixed ratio I can't change the width and height but look at how I can drag it over and stop it about a quarter inch from the edge. Now do you see how nicely I can move this up and down here and you can see just how nicely my ad is going to fit inside of this and my eventual Jeep that's on top. You crop it the same way when it's over. You can put the crop tool, now let me deselect and put the crop tool on a 24 by 12 crop. So if I crop this thing, look at how the crop tool itself actually does the same thing. So you see how I can crop it. Right now I don't want to crop it so I'm going to click the crop tool and it's going to say don't crop. So right now I'm going to put the opacity back up. Now obviously boys and girls, I don't want this man in there. Okay, and I want you to see a very cool trick in Photoshop that can happen instantly and you don't have to almost do anything. Now I've 
always told you, no matter what, or I'm always going to tell you, never ruin a layer and never ruin a file. So save as right now and add your name, call it your name underscore um, magazine add or just add, okay? And I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it into the new layer icon. Now, I can mess up the top one or destroy it because I always have the bottom one. But I'm going to hit L key for lasso. What I want you to see is, and again, I'm going to lower the opacity so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to draw a little, not even a perfect lasso, around this character, including his bag. And I'm going to go around his little feet and around his legs and his boots. And I'm gonna give it about an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch around the whole thing so Photoshop knows what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna actually mess up and I'm gonna go like this and go, oh darn, I didn't get his hat in there. Because there's two things I wanna show you. If you add the option key to the lasso, holding the, I'm um, sorry, holding the shift key is a plus sign. Now watch how I can add to this lasso by just making a circle inside. Now, if I want to take away from it, like you see this big space that's right here in the corner, if I hold the option or alt key down, I can make a circle like this and I can subtract from the lasso. So if I want to, I can clean up areas and make things really nice. You can see how I, I I think I might have missed the bag. So what I'm going to do is make the opacity go back up to 100%. And no, I did pretty good. I made too big of a space around his boot. So I'm going to go in here. I sounded Canadian, didn't I? That was, very, that was a joke. Anyway, um, which I am Canadian, actually. Um, so now that I have him surrounded, I am going to go to Edit, which is Shift F5, Fill, and I'm going to go bring this box over and show you that I'm not going to fill with the foreground or background color. I'm going to fill with content aware. Now I'm not going to go up to that menu again. I'm going to hit Shift F5 next time. But watch how smart Photoshop is. Photoshop, Photoshop is going to go through and take him out. It just completely eradicated him from that background. I didn't have to do anything. Now. I didn't want this tower of rocks right here. I wanted this rock, but I didn't want this tower of rocks. So I'm going to go around and I want that rock right there, but I'm going to go around and surround all of these rocks right there with another lasso, just like this. And I'm going to go to Shift F5 and I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to take out those rocks. It did a beautiful job taking them out. And what happened was it did duplicate this rock and made it go over here. But the Jeep is going to cover that up and I'm really not worried about where that is. Now I also went over here to my other ad and I got rid of this, although the Jeep will probably cover that up. I want to show you how I can take this kind of little road that's way down there. That's a highway way down there. And I'm going to come around like this. And I'm going to come through here. And I'm going to take out this. Again, Shift F5. And let me hit the return key. Now, if you didn't like some of what it did, like this little thing here, I'm going to surround that and go to Shift F5 five and hit the return key and it took that away. Now I'm okay with that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now what I would do is I would start in on all of my changes. That's where I'm going to tell you look over to your right in this layer palette. You're going to see in a minute a bunch of layers. But remember all I had was this file. Now what I want to do before I leave it is add two layers called adjustment layers and I want to make one be levels and I want to make one be hue and saturation. So I'm going to click to the adjustment down here on the bottom right and I'm going to go to hue and saturation. And I'm going to bring over my properties menu so you can see I'm going to oversaturate this a little bit and get the color to look really nice because my bright red Jeep wouldn't look very good in that drab drab thing. Don't go too far with it. You can get carried away, but I think that's absolutely stunning. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a levels to it. So I'm going to take the levels and look, I'm going to pick up the dark on the one side. Let's pick this up and move this out so I can get to it. I'm going to pick up the dark over here and saturate the dark a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up the white and bring it over to the middle. Now, 
watch the vibrancy that this had. I'm going to put this properties back on my other screen, okay? If I remove the levels and I remove the hue, the, the hue and saturation, look at how I have a pretty drab scene. So I click and I click and I add those to it. And now, I want these only to affect this picture that I'm clicking on right here. So I hold the Alt or Option key and I clip the levels to this and I clip the hue and saturation to this. Now they're only going to affect this layer. Now I hit Command S to save the file and I go on with the rest of this. Now what I want to do is, in fact, I will save it so I don't lose it. I'll bring the Save As window over here and I'll show you that inside I'm going to go Sorial Add 2 and I'm going to change it to a Photoshop file and I'm going to say Sorial Add 2 and then at the end of this I'm just going to get rid of everything that's my add number 2. Okay, so now um, that's where I actually am going to bring in the car. Okay, so now I have to go get the car. But what I want to do is hit the F key so I can have all of my tabs on top and I'm going to go get my car, which that's my final ad. There's the one that is the longer billboard, which I can close and not save it. And now here is my car. Somewhere is my car. There it is. Now I'm going to open up all my layers for the car. Now what I want to show you is I opened up, I went over to here and I opened up Brian's um, folder. Don't tell me I closed my folder. Okay. Where did I put that folder? Do you know that I don't know where I put that folder? Yes I did. It's right there. Oh, it's right there. Okay. So um, it's called Brian's magazine ad. Let me put this back so I always have access to this. And I'm going to open up the Jeep as it came out of the JPEG. So here I go to open with Photoshop and there's your original Jeep. Okay, now I'm going to close that one because I already saved as. Immediately when you open yours up, save as to your own. This one's called Sorial's um, Jeep. Okay, now what I would like to do is to cascade this to the full screen. So I'm going to hit the F key because that's important. Now the reason why I have two Jeeps over here is because I can take away one Jeep and I can show you the other Jeep that I actually cut out. Now what happened was I took this Jeep, I'm going to turn off the hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to show you by um, turning off the Jeep that I did how I actually began this Jeep. Okay, Your job is to take the pen and draw around this entire Jeep. Now what I want to do is show you how to work the pen tool. First I'm going to take the path palette and I'm going to click on the body that I did. Okay. Now I'm going to lower the opacity. Notice I added a black layer underneath called layer 1. I should show you something. When you open up your JPEG, and I'm going to open it up again, when you open up your JPEG, do you see how this is called background layer and it's locked? I'm going to double click in the blank area and I'm going to make it a layer. Now I can add a layer above or below and it's no longer going to save a JPEG. As soon as I want to save this file, it's going to ask me what do you want to name the PSD file? Because as soon as I made this into a real layer, it's no longer a JPEG. It's not flattened. It's something I can add layers to. Now look how I added a layer by clicking the new layer button down here. And I'm going to move it below that layer and I'm going to hit command delete to fill it with black. Now why I'm doing that is because I want to take the opacity down on this and move over to where this edge is by middle mouse buttoning close and show you a little something to do with the pen tool. The pen tool, and this is your five minute version because it's not going to take long. The pen tool, when you click, makes paths. See how a work path automatically started to get made? See how I closed a shape with four points? The command key or the control key, if I marquee one point, then that's the only one selected and I can move it around. So I can go over here and marquee that one and move it around. I can go over here and marquee this one and move it around. Now if I want to draw a box, I'm going to click the delete key once and twice. Now if I want to make a curvy thing, 
I click and hold and pull out handlebars, click and hold and pull out handlebars, click and hold and pull out handlebars and go back to the beginning and when a little circle appears that tells me I can close the shape I click and hold and pull handlebars. Now let's go back to here and go back like this and then I'm going to close the shape by going like that and I was holding the option key and the reason it didn't do it in the first place is because I had clicked another point. Again, I'll go back like this. One, two, three, four and look at how it's going to close the shape right over here and whoops I missed you gotta wait till the circle appears and then click inside again whoops let me go one two three four and when the circle appears telling you you can close the shape go ahead and click it okay it was almost on it but it didn't so I have to command Z back and when the circle appears I can now close the shape now I wanna start off with a straight one so let's just go click I want you to see how you can turn a straight point or a corner into a curved corner. If you hold the Alt on a PC or the Option on a Mac, look at how the icon changes from the pen to the convert tool. See how I can pull out a handlebar? Now not only can I pull out a handlebar, but if I keep my finger on the Alt or Option key, I can split the handlebars. I can even pick up one and put it back into the point. I can even go back in the point and pull out two new ones. You get what I'm saying? Now, let's go over here and make this one a curved point. So hold the Alt or Option key and pull out a handlebar. Don't leave it twisted. Come back around and go like this. Now let's say that we wanted to move this point into the center. We hold the Command or Control key and grab the point and move it in. Now notice how the whole thing moved. So I have to marquee only that one with the command or control key held down and now it moves. So, how do the, all you have to do with the pen is remember that the command key, I have to make a shape here, just a minute, I'm, I'm making a shape. Let me go back over here. The command key actually allows you in the pen, when you hold the alt or option key, it changes into the convert tool. If you hold the pen over a line it turns into a plus sign you can add a point if you hold the pen with no th with nothing held down over that point you just added you can subtract it you can even subtract that one you can then go add another one now to move that one you hold the command or control key and you can move it so there's a lot of variation with this if you become deselected while you're drawing see how I'm drawing and now I'm deselected hold the command or control key, click so you see the points, put your pen over the last one and pull out a new handlebar, or just click in the point and, here let me Z back, and now let's go forward, and now I'm gonna go away, now look at how I can just click inside of there and pull out a new one, now I, I missed, you see that? I missed, it looks like I had it, but I didn't, see how they're two separate ones? Now. So I'm going to activate it, wait for the pen to turn into that little symbol that says you can join back in, and then you just join back in and you keep on going and you have one path. Now, I already went around this, but when you draw, remember, I turned down the opacity from this because at 100% opacity when you draw, it's very difficult to see the shape and the pen line at the same time. Number two. I put a black background in. If I hadn't and I'd lower the opacity, the checkerboard makes it nearly impossible to see the shape. So place a black background or a white background underneath. Now I'm going to click to this black background and I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to lower the opacity on the Jeep itself to about 50%. I'm going to click on this and change it. Let me click this and foreground color and make it white. And I'm going to go Option Delete and now it's white. Now. I can see pretty well, okay, now see how hard that line is to see right there? So if I Z back or I just click and I make it back to black, see how well I can see the pen line? Okay. I'm going to go around and do this for a minute. I'm going to start anywhere I want and I'm going to start to pull these handlebars and I'm going to make a few mistakes. Now could I put a handlebar there and then go over here? The answer is yes, but I could go all the way over to here 
hold the command key down and just re-edit, whoops I missed, re-edit that one. See how I can pull the handlebars up and I'm actually now, I have to marquee that, and I can now actually edit that. Now let's go around this curve. To join back in, listen to my words, I'm going to hold the option key and pull out a handlebar and now I'm going to go right up to this one. Now I go back out on the screen and I just click and pull a little handlebar. I go around this. I click and hold and pull a little handlebar. Now if you had left that point up too high, please make sure that snap is off. Did you hear me? Snap. Write that down. Snap is off. Now I want to go in and move this point. So let's go grab it join back in the point and go right over to here and you can see how now I'm starting I'm gonna go back in that one and pull out a handlebar let's go back over to here go around the corner and try to go down the middle of these I realize it's hard to see back out a little bit and you can see how I'm trying to leave just a little bit of the car into the background okay I don't want to have the line come out too far like this. Now do you see what it did when I grabbed this to go draw the next one? See how it really ruined this part of the path? I'm going to Command Z back. If you hold the Option key and you pull out of that point, it doesn't ruin the last one you did and it lets you put a handlebar in place. This is not the line, this is a handlebar. Now I'll move up here and you can see how you can pull out a handlebar, go over here pull out a new handlebar. If you want to, you can hold the command key and re-edit that shape as you go. If you didn't become disassembled from the line or disselected, you can go right over to here and continue your entire thing. Now, I want to change direction on this. I want to go up. I don't want to go this way. I'll put this back where it needs to go by holding the command key. I'll switch over to the option key and I'll move this up. So now I can go right over to here. Now, I think I've given you enough direction on drawing around your shape. Look at how I'm doing this. Remember, you're magnified so big here that even though it doesn't... Now, I should have... I'm going to Command Z back. I should have held the Option key because I didn't want this. Look at how that has a curve going to the inside. I didn't want that. I want this to go straight up from there. So I click and that one handlebar is gone leaving the one on the left I can pull up a new one and look at how I can come right over and I can draw around this whole shape now if you pull a handlebar too long for the next one either hold the command key and shrink it or go in with the option key and pull out a shorter one did you hear what I said now let's go down around go down around go down around now let me pull this one with the command key in here let's go click and click now you don't want to make sure you want to make sure when you're grabbing one of these points that all the points aren't selected I'll show you what I mean if I were to grab all of these points and move one of them see how the whole path moves be very careful that the whole path doesn't move now since I've already done that and I've already gone around this whole thing I'm going to not waste time on this file by showing you that I can go around the whole car so I'm going to close this file for now um, actually, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go to the one that I finished. So let's go. This is the number two. I'm gonna go to the number one ad, and I'm gonna turn off this one, this one, and this one. I'm gonna open up this one, which is my Jeep, and I'm gonna go. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's the actual ad. Sorry about that. Um, let me go turn on this one. Okay, and turn on all of this one. Okay. Um, I went to the wrong one. I needed to go to the Jeep one. So let's go to Brian's Jeep. Um, Jeep 11 PSD. There we go. Now, I have gone around this whole entire thing. I'm going to show you by taking the opacity away from that Jeep and turning on my black layer. Now I'm going to click on the path so you can see the path by holding the command and option keys or control and alt and click on the path. Now look at how I've gone around the whole path of the car. I'll go around it nice and slow so you can see how I've done it. Okay, look. Look at how I've done it. Look at how I take all of this. 
Notice how when I need a curve, there's not 12 points there. There's only 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's go around the whole thing. Now, I'll zoom in here so you can see. See how I've gone around the whole thing. I'll even take more opacity out of that Jeep so you can see it. Let's go around. Look at how I've gone around the whole thing. I even averaged the tires. I didn't go around the treads of the tires because there's a little trick we can use later on a layer mask to take away the treads. Now you can barely see the tires here. So this is time to turn up the opacity. See how you can see that better? Now look at how I've gone around the whole Jeep and I ignored, let me get close, I ignored the treads right there because I can go take them out of the final one which I will try to remember to show you later. And I even missed, I, this tire is, is, is out too far but that's okay because I'm zoomed in so incredibly much. Now what I did to separate this from the background is, and I'm going to pretend that I didn't do this file right here, okay, this layer. I clicked on the Jeep. I now turn by clicking the command key on the body and I turned it into a selection. I then am going to go up to layer, I'm sorry, select, modify, and I'm going to add a feather of one pixel. See that? It says one pixel. I'm going to say okay. Now what I want to do is I don't want to ruin the original, so I'm going to duplicate the original. Now, if I simply click the layer mask button with the selection activated, I actually, whoops, I want to turn off the car. And I want to change this now to a white background before I do that. Okay, so I'm going to deselect my selection or else the white would only fill inside the selection. And I'm going to click this bottom layer and go Option Delete. You see the white fill in there? Good. Let me go back to my body and make a selection of it. I just did. I'm going to go Shift F6 to bring up the feather. See it's Select, Modify, and it's Shift F6. Let me cancel that. Select, Modify, Shift F6. One. Now I'm going to click the Layer Mask button, which is the third one over. Added it to the wrong one. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I need to, I don't want to add a layer mask to the white layer. I'm going to add it to the car. And I don't care about making mistakes in front of you. You know why? <laughs> That's all Photoshop is. Learn from them. Okay, so let's go to click the layer mask button and look how I cut the car out very cleanly. All right, and it looks really nice. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to go to this Jeep now and I'm going to turn on the bottom one and I'm going to show you that what I did was I made it into a red Jeep. Now, there's a couple little sophisticated things that I want you to see about paths. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the Jeep I did and I'm going to um, um, minimize, uh, lower the opacity on this Jeep. I drew another path, so I need to go back and put in the black or maybe you can even see it. Um, no, it's really hard to see. So I'm going to um, minimize the opacity on that again of the Jeep that I did. So let's go down a little bit farther. And I'm going to change this to black again by going Command or Control Delete. Now, I wanted you to see a very cool thing. And I'm going to hit the Tab key so that all the windows go away. I wanted you to see that Photoshop doesn't ever require that um, I'm going to bring back just the path palette because I need to click to something and I'm going to move it up. See how I didn't redo this line that I'm pointing on all the way around the whole Jeep? I didn't redo it. Okay. What I did was I already had that done. See there? Now I want to isolate the sheet metal and anything that's inside the sheet metal I can fix later with a layer mask, meaning when it changes color I can do it later. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So notice how I want you to take the pen. Now the only accurate line on this entire thing, if you follow what I'm saying, start over here, is all the way through this bottom area is where the blue of the sheet metal comes into contact with the black of the bumper. Now I do want to bring back the layer palette which is F7 and I want to up the um, um, opacity so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to click on this path with the pen tool with the command option key or control alt key held down so you can see my path. See how I isolated out 
all of the sheet metal but right over here when it came time to 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 draw up this point right here I didn't I came outside the vehicle okay I know I'm making a big deal of it but I want you to see something right now there's a trick and I'll say it about four times and then you can understand it you can add a path to another path you can subtract a path from another path you can um, intersect a path from another path I'll show you what that means and you can exclude a path from another path so I'm going to show you this little trick I had right over here which I there they are right there now let me um, turn this off you see that path that's right here I am going to turn that path number one into a selection okay and I'm going to click on the other path I made which they now overlap each other so I just drew two boxes not a big deal right okay if I want to subtract path 2 from path 1, I hold the command key to turn this into a selection, and I hold the option key, and it turns into a minus symbol. Right here, it's turning into a minus symbol, and I click. And I now just subtracted this shape from that selection. Let me command Z back. Now if I want to add them together so I get the entire circumference as a selection, I command click on the first one. I'll just click to it so you can see it. I didn't have to though. And I'm going to command shift click the second one. Now it added them. Now I'm going to command Z back. So it's command or control shift click, alt or option with the command key held down to subtract. One more time. Let me deselect. Let me make a selection of the first one and I'll click to the second one. I'm going to go Command or Control, Alt or Option, click on the icon and I subtract. Command Z or Control Z back. I'm going to Command or Control click the first one again. I'm now going to go Command or Control and add the Shift key to add the second one to the first one. And let me Command Z or Control Z back. Now I'm going to take I'll, I'll make a selection of the first one and I'm gonna show you the second one what if I want the middle area I don't want this outer area and I don't want this outer area I want this area you hold command alt and shift I'm, I'm sorry control alt or sh and shift all three keys or command option and shift and you click on the second one see how you get the middle shape now the first one is called when I take this one and I add it to this one, the new term in Photoshop is called combine. But we're going to call it add. That's old school. When you click on the first one and you subtract the second one, that's called subtract. When you command click on the first one and intersect the second one, which is all three keys held down, it's called intersect. So now let me deselect and let's go back and click on our car. Now why did I tell you all that? Because I have, I'm going to show you, I have, I'll turn on the car and I'll minimize it in opacity. Uh, I need to turn um, the opacity down. Okay, just barely so you can see it. I'm going to make a selection of the first one. See how nice that is? See how it's a selection that shows you the whole car? Now I'm going to just click on the second one. I want to get rid of the whole bottom of this, okay? Meaning I only want the sheet metal. So see how I didn't make this accurately match up to this? If I hold all three keys down and click on the second one, do you see how I generated an intersection of the sheet metal of the, all the sheet metal including the tires to just be the sheet metal so that's what I want you to do you're gonna have to cut the car out like I did then you're gonna have to draw a path like I did to protect the sheet metal but don't accurately I'll deselect and I'll show you the what I drew don't accurately draw all this just take this second one that I'm clicking on with the pen tool and just make sure you make it wide enough now do you see where I accurately do drew this little section because I didn't want to turn this blue or red or green or yellow or orange or whatever okay so you're gonna have to make custom fits there Rem watch this movie several times if you have to but let's get to the heart of the matter okay so what I'm gonna do is to show you how I actually now added a um, and I'm not gonna turn on the one that I did okay I'm gonna go click on the one that you did right here and I'm gonna now turn this back into a white background so I'm gonna click it on 
Um, I need to hit the tab key to bring back all of my stuff. I'll put this down here. And I'm going to go Option Delete and add the white in the background there. Okay. And I'm going to click away from my path so nothing is selected. So, so far, all I have is a layer that is the car. doesn't have any more background left on it. Cool. What I want to do is to now isolate the sheet metal in a hue and a saturation part. I'm going to close this because it's confusing you. So all I have is this layer with a thing here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to add an adjustment layer of hue and saturation. Boom. Now, I am going to turn, I'll put it right on top of this. Okay, I want to turn this car red, but I don't want this to be turned red. I don't want anything inside of here to be turned red. When I turn the car from blue to red, this is going to change to a weird color like green. I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. But first, I'm going to add a mask to this, which will isolate it. First, I'm going to change it to red so you can see. I'm going to take this in hue and saturation, and we're going to go way over to here and find a real nice red right there. Okay? I did. It looks great. It looks wonderful. And even though it looks like I didn't do anything to this, I don't look at how the window is pink. Well, the window is not supposed to be pink. It's supposed to be that tint of blue or greenish blue. But I'm going to put this properties thing on the other layer. I want to only affect the sheet metal. And then I want to add more stuff to this layer mask to do what I need to do. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a selection of the body. I'm going to turn off this car so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to intersect it with the sheet metal. Now, do you see how I made this really beautiful custom shape here? I am going to fill the background of this layer mask with black, leaving the inside white. The inside that's white is where my new red car is. Follow what I'm saying? So I am going to go here to select inverse, which is shift command I, and I'm going to fill up this layer mask with option delete, and I'm going to fill it up as black. Now I'm going to turn the car back on. Notice how only the stuff that is outside, anything that's outside this, where I'm touching outside this selection is not being affected by the hue and saturation change. That's what I want you to do. Now, I have to click on the layer mask because I want this windshield to be back to its normal blue color. So I have to add black. Look what I'm doing. I'm option clicking on this. I have to add black to this and I'm going to freehand it in there. There's no need to take all this time to do it. So I'm going to hit the B key. I'm going to deselect. I'm going to make the brush be bigger. I'm going to make the brush be bigger. Let's just let it be bigger. Uh, it's caps locked down. Let me make sure I'm in the B key. I'm on the layer mask. I'm clicking and let's, whoops, I'm probably way big. Okay. Um, okay, this is fun. I need to make sure, deselect, and let's make sure that this is bigger. Okay, it's not changing, so I need to go into here. Brush tool, okay. Um, there's um, This is really cool. There's a reason why the brush is not allowing me to see it, okay? Um, it's either so huge. There, it was just so big. I'm sorry. It was just so big. Um, I'm going to make it smaller. I must have been holding the plus sign. Okay, so now I'm making it smaller. Let's zoom in. So sometimes when you think the brush isn't there, just hit the left bracket and you'll see it. Now, I want to paint this out, so I'm going to put the flow of the brush on 100%. I'm going to put the color of the brush on black. And watch what happens when I right hand click and I make the hardness almost all the way to hard. And now I'm going to paint and fill up the entire windshield with black, which prevents it from being affected by the hue and saturation. Now I'm not doing a real good job, nor do I have to do a great job. Because you can see that some things are protected. Now I'm going to go down, meaning protected. You can see that when the hue and saturation goes over, see, see I'm going to make a mistake right there. See how I went into the blue? I don't really care. I'll fix that in a minute. I just want to make sure that this entire thing here has got black on it. Now, how do I make sure it's nicely fit in there? I alt or option click on the layer mask. And now look what I missed. I need to go back and fill this up with black. And now I have that filled in. Okay. Now,